Green Team Media. We'll start with the restoration. I mean, we never had a true digital master of Titanic. The digital age was not really upon us, you know, when we were doing Titanic. And we wanted to create a 4K digital master that we would be our archival master, get rid of, you know, YCMs and those type of things. So that was the first thing we set out to do. I think people misconceive why do something in 3D. I maintain you do something in 3D to engage the audience more in your narrative storytelling. 3D is not a world coming out of a window. It's a window into a world. So the fact that we have two hours of movie in Titanic that's not about action, 3D is perfect for that. It draws the audience in. It creates a more voyeuristic experience. All of the scenes, from the intimacy of the drawing scene to, you know, Leo running to catch the ship at the beginning of the movie, you're going to feel that. You're going to be immersed. You know, I used to say that uh, when we were making Titanic, that in the past, people had used visual effects to take people to the future. We wanted to use visual effects to make people feel a part of history. 3D is going to enable us to do that even more. The response we've gotten has always been surprise. Surprise at how engaging the story is of the movie, because that's why Titanic worked. Titanic didn't work because of the action sequences. It worked because of the characters in the story. And people are surprised at how quickly they are literally transported back to what they had experienced for those who had seen the movie before. And then they're surprised as they watch it that they forget that they're wearing 3D glasses. When the clip is over and we go back in to see the press, most of them still have their glasses on and just start talking to us because they've, they've forgotten they're wearing them because they've been engaged in the narrative storytelling of the film. We don't go into a movie with expectations on how a film is going to do or not going to do. We believe that we have a story that has themes that are just as relevant to today's audience as they were to an audience 15 years ago. And to me, a movie that works is a movie that has themes that are bigger than their genre. And I think that's what Jim puts into his films. And I think Titanic is a great example of that. And I think when audiences go to see this, young and old, they're going to take something away from it. They're going to leave the movie theater and they're going to be thinking about something. And I think that's very important. I think the score is inextricably linked to the success of the movie. The score is, is the emotional heartbeat of the film. And what James Horner was able to deliver were themes that, as you went through the film, were recognizable to an audience. Subconsciously, as they're going through the film, on the journey, he added to everything. And to his credit, most composers will work on a movie for six to eight weeks, maybe. He took six months off and dedicated himself to this film. We didn't ask him to go write a pop song for the film. He took the initiative himself. And the first time we heard My Heart Will Go On, he had already gone to Celine Dion, and we heard her demoing the song. Now, we didn't know if it would work in the context of this period movie. And Jim didn't want to listen to it that much before making a decision. So what he did, he had the editors cut it onto the end of the film and waited until we screened the movie for Celine Dion in New York. And he wanted to experience watching the film and see how it played in the context of watching the film. And it was only after that screening that he committed to using the song. I think what the song did was more for audience members. It gave them an opportunity to return to what they felt in the theater without having to go back to the theater. When they heard that song, it was transportive and brought them back to the, those feelings and those emotions of the theater.